So you hop over to the Tower Defense Simulator Discord server. You know, check out skin submissions and you're, you're just so sad because you can't make any of this yourself because studio building sucks. But what if there was another program you could do your 3D modeling in? One that was free and open source and was better than Maya. Oh yeah, I'm talking about Blender. In a fresh Google tab, go to blender.org and install the correct version for your operating system. We're actually going to be starting off in Studio because there's a couple assets that we have to grab from it. Go to the avatar panel at the top of your screen and put in an R6 block rig. Uh, set your move distance to one stud because it just makes your life so much easier. Now for that rig, delete everything except for the torso and the limbs. Uh, uh, wow, N now it's perfect, isn't it? Uh, no, take the head of an R15 rig and put it onto our old rig. Yeah, that looks better. Alright, we have our rig. Now, annihilate the base plate and set the position of the rig to 0, 0, 0. This'll just, once again, make your life easier. Uh, under file, choose advanced and uh, export as an OBJ. This just turns the whole studio place into one file. Recap, so we basically just made a rig in studio, uh, then we turned it into an object file, now we're going to trace that in Blender and make our character. As I said, we're going to be tracing the model rather than actually using it, because trust me when I say you don't want to use the original model. The faces get kind of messed up and tracing it is just easier. The entire tracing process can be done on your keyboard, which is really nice, so I'll just say all the keys that you have to press in order. Press numpad 1 to go into a 2D view and add a cube, then press G, Z, and 1 to move it up 1, and then S, Y, 0.5 to make it less thick. Then G, X, negative 0.5, Shift, D, G, X, 1, Shift, D, G, Z, 2, S, X, 2, G, X, negative 0.5, Shift, D, G, Z, 2, G, X, 1, Shift, D, G, X, negative 3. And there you go. This process may require an aspirin or two. Alright, uh, now add a cylinder, scale it to fit the head, then uh, tab into edit mode and just extrude and scale until it lines up with the original head. To make it look nicer, you can right click to shade smooth and then enable auto smooth in the object data panel. Now with the whole body selected in edit mode, press ctrl B to bevel it. You can manually move around a couple of these edges later if you want, just to make it a little more clean. Your creation is beautiful, no matter what the Turbo Squid admins say. While modeling, we only want to work with one component at a time, so on an object you can press H to hide it. And in that little menu up there, you can press the little curve button to make it visible again. Nice! Now, every character has four components. The torso, the legs, the arms, and the head. I usually start with the arms, but you can do whatever you want. Hide all the components that you're not working with and delete one of the arms. Then, set the origin to the 3D cursor, and under the modifier tab, add a mirror modifier to it. Oh, that's pretty cool. Click on the little loop cut icon and add a couple loop cuts to your mesh. This just subdivides the faces so that we have more faces to work with. Now select any group of faces, right click and hit extrude along normals. Now you can use the little move handlebars to move those extruded faces around. It's really useful. The three basic functions that you can use on faces are scaling, movement, and rotation. Basically the same as Roblox Studio. Just with these functions you can create a lot of really cool shapes and a lot of really cool geometry on your arms. Another really useful tool is the bevel. It's what we used earlier on our character, and it just turns edges into faces. So it's really good for rounding things off and just making things look more natural and smooth. If you press I on a selected face, it'll inset it, which is really handy for creating things like window panes or holes in the middle of an object. The last tool we're going to go over is the knife tool, which is good for creating really weird shapes on your faces. You activate it by pressing K, tracing a shape, pressing E, and then enter. You can do the exact same process on the legs, so really the only two things that are left are the torso and the head. For the torso, just cut it in half and then do the same process as before to add a mirror modifier to it. You also want to enable clipping in the mirror modifier settings to be sure that the torso doesn't get all messed up. Now you can use all the same tools on the torso that you used on the arm. The only difference is that the mirroring is a little bit different to work with, but it's pretty easy to figure out. Ah, and finally we have the head. To mirror this one, you're going to want to add a knife cut across the top and bottom circles, so that way you can cut them in half. <laughs> now modeling the head is going to be a little bit different than the other components, because if you try to use the same tools that we used earlier, you will find that they kind of look like crap. I prefer modeling with a plane. Press numpad 7 on your keyboard to go to a top 2D view, and then just kind of trace the head in edit mode. 
After you finish tracing it, you can mirror it to the other side of the head. After applying the mirror modifier, you can fix broken edges by selecting both of the adjacent ones and then hitting F on your keyboard to fill them. After that, you can just extrude the mask up, scaling every once in a while, and then pressing F on the final face to fill it. For eye holes, you can delete a couple faces and then select all the vertices around them. Then press Ctrl Shift B on your keyboard to bevel the vertices. You can enable proportional editing at the top of your screen to fix any clipping bits or any bits of the mask that you just don't like. Lastly, add a solidify modifier to the mask to make it a little bit more thick. And yeah, those are all the things you need to know to make a cool Roblox character. As I said, for the legs, you can just copy what you did for the arms. This is the process that I use to make my characters, and I'd highly recommend it to anyone. Let me know if you guys want to see tutorials on coloring objects or marketing these objects online, because I'd love to do them sometime. Till then, uh, yeah, happy modeling.